Hey folks, welcome back to The Contrarians. We have another panel discussion for you tonight. Today, our topic is gonna to be XTC. We have our wonderful Patreons with us, um, patrons with us. And if you wanna join any of our panel discussions, um, run over to patreon.com and, and follow us at any tier and you can um, vote, give ideas of what we're gonna talk about and join our panel discussions. So uh, we hope to see many more people joining us and we're glad to see our, our wonderful patrons today. Um, Today we're going to be talking about XTC and the album that we're going to be talking about is Nonsuch. So I've actually done a bunch of research and I'm going to go over some of these statistics and things that I found about this album. Um, it's actually quite interesting. Uh, Nonsuch came out in 1992. It charted at 28 in the UK and 97 in the US and did not certify. Drums and Wires was certified gold in Canada. Black Sea and English Settlement were both certified silver in the UK. And as far as Wikipedia is concerned, those are the only certified albums that XTC has put out. Um, the singles from Nonsuch are The Disappointed, which charted at 33 in the UK, did not chart in the US. The Ballad of Peter Pumpkinhead, which charted at 71 in the UK and did not chart in the US. And Wrapped in Grey also had a limited release as a single. Their only U.S. charting single was Mayor of Simpleton from Oranges and Lemons, though they had many U.K. charting singles throughout their career. Um, in terms of review, it's actually, Nonsuch is actually pretty highly regarded for the most part. All Music gave the album 4.5 stars. Only Skylarking ranks higher than Nonsuch on All Music for their critic and fan reviews, getting five stars in both. Encyclopedia of Music gave the album five stars. Record Collector gave the album five stars. Rolling Stone Album Guide gave it two stars and gave Skylarking five stars, which was the highest Rolling Stone Guide um, album uh, for XTC. All Music says XTC crafted their most immaculate album to date with Nonsuch, a measured and reflective record recalling the Beach Boys more than the Beatles. The album retains some of their late 80s psychedelic flourishes, but those have been integrated into an elaborate, lush pop setting that falls somewhere between Skylarking and oranges and lemons. The album dipped slightly lyrically with the smartest monkeys in war dance as they are a little too preachy, a modest minor masterpiece. Um, here's a negative fan review from All Music. The songs are so bad, the lyrics so abysmal, Andy's ugly metaphors so forced that this is easily their very worst effort, which is saying something since Go To exists. The disappointed is kind of okay, but it's the only good track and still only evokes their earlier and best work. It sounds like an overly ornate version of the sort of bad power pop that Brent, that was beginning to proliferate in the 90s. And the lyrics are largely an exercise in banality from someone who has nothing to say from his ivory tower, half a star. Here's an interesting piece of an interview I found with Andy Partridge. So the interviewer says, you certainly didn't get the return on your investment on the video for the disappointed. That was your own money that you'd hoped for. Um, did the 45,000 uh, pounds invested in that video sell its equivalent amount in, in more copies of Nonsuch? And then Andy replies, no, I think it was shown on TV a couple of times and that was it. Nonsuch was a very poor seller in England. The interviewer says, around the rest of the, rest of the world, it did all right, didn't it? And then Andy says, don't think so. It sold fairly poorly in the States as well. And at the time, I thought it was our best album by far. I don't think it is now. I think it's our second best album. I think Apple Venus is our best. Um, and then another little interesting quote from him was he says, Andy says, listening to an album at listening to an album is an event. It's a film. It's a play. It's reading a book. You wouldn't read chapter nine first and jump to chapter two. You read the book the way the author intended it tended you to read it from page one to page last. You watch a film from scene to scene, scene one to scene end. You hear a collection of music on an album from track one to the last track. It's like saying there should be one or two seconds of blank screen in between every major scene in the film. No, some scenes crossfade, some scenes are blank, some scenes dissolve. It's how you're pulled through the experience. It's the order we want you to hear it in, the way we'd like you to hear it. The fact that one blurs into another, that's intended. That's not some weird accident that happens at the pressing plant. You must think that it's some terrible disease that has infect, infested all of our records, but we have no control over the crossfading. No, I want it to happen that way. And just to go over a few rankings list. So it's interesting because the critic reviews actually um, are quite high on this album, but all of the ranking lists that I looked at, it's actually pretty low, except for Ranker. 
So Louder Sound had Don Such at number eight. Uh, they said the third double album, XTC's career nearly didn't happen. Only a reshuffle at the record label would finally get it off the ground. In retrospect, this was perhaps the writing on the wall for their relationship with Virgin Records. And after this album, the band would go on a creative strike, which lasted another seven years. Non such is packed with ideas. And as such, it lacks the immediacy, immediacy of some of their previous albums, but it does reward repeated listening. Kicking off with the excellent single, The Ballad of Peter Pumpkinhead, the band are easy and comfortable in their own skin. All the classic XTC touchstones are here with the poppy magnificence of the disappointed and omnibus to the piano led beauty of rock, a song which Partridge singles out as one of his favorites. The album doesn't rank as highly as it could do in part to its daunting length and sprawling, sometimes overwhelming exploration. However, you've got an hour to spare and your full attention to give non such pays dividends. So it ranked at number eight. Number one on this list was Drums and Wires. Stereo Gum had it ranked at number 13. Um, and just a couple of quick lines from them. A decent 10-track album padded out with filler and half-baked ideas until it ballooned up to 17 tracks and an hour-long running time. The disc is also seemingly programmed to take into account the short attention spans of most modern music fans as it is front-loaded with its best work. The first six tracks are peerless slices of pop, moving from the jaw jangle of ballad Peter Pumpkinhead to the... Uh, Lifting My Bird performs to the stately 6-8 shuffle of the disappointed with giddy ease. It's when the album hits Partridge's ode to watching his daughter ride her favorite rocking horse that things start to go awry. This shift in mood and tone become too jarring. The sparkly-eyed love song, then she appeared, bumping unnaturally against the uh, material anti-conflict sentiments of war dance or wedging the delicate bungalow between two Partridge's Two of Partridge's most plotting rock numbers. It also provided a final, final nail in the heart of the band's oft-fractured relationship with Virgin as they pretty well gave up on promoting the album. Wrapped in Grey was planned as a third single with money spent on a video and everything, but quickly withdrawn by the label. An unceremonious end to a long working relationship, and one that Partridge and company are still feeling the effects of to this day. So it ranked at number 13. Their number one was Skylarking. Best ever albums had Skylarking at number one. XTC's uh, Non Such came in at number six, so it was a little higher than the last two. And Ranker, which is just fans voting, actually has Non Such ranked at number three, with Apple Venus Volume One coming in at number two and Black Sea coming in at number one. So that's all the research that I did. I know I threw a lot at you gentlemen. So I'm going to throw it around and hear from each of you. Um, tell me if you're yay or nay on the album, what you like about the album, and what you'd rank it out of 10. So I'm going to throw it over to Todd first. Take it away, Todd. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Marco. I am definitely yay on the album. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I consider Skylarking to be my favorite, but I think that None Such is a very close number two. And if after my my research that I did in the last couple of days, I think that it's possible that None Such might be a little bit better than Skylarking. But I hold a lot of Skylarking in very high regard because of Todd Rundgren's involvement. And uh, I think this the song Sacrificial Bonfire is so fantastic that I have trouble talking about it and holding my composure. So uh, I think quite a lot of of both Skylarking and None Such. Um, None Such was produced by Gus Dungeon. And um, when I saw that, when the album came out, I had not seen his name since early uh, Elton John albums. I think that's what he's most uh, known for. Um, I found I came across a, a really interesting um, uh, documentary where he's talking about doing the early Elton John albums. And he's talking about how when they mic the piano, the, if you mic, if you put a mic inside a piano and close the lid, that there's like a dead zone. And so he like figured out that Gus Dudgeon figured out a way to put another piano suspended from the ceiling. And then they mic that. And, um, and so, and he was, he was saying that there are some studios in the UK where that setup is still there and they're still using it. So really interesting guy, really talented. Um, the album was uh, mixed by Nick Davis, who I did not know at the time, except for that he produced the uh, Genesis album, uh, We Can't Dance, before that, which was the year prior to None Such. And before that, I didn't know who he was. Um, the uh, drummer on the album is Dave Maddox from Fairport Convention. And um, I'm also not familiar with him as a drummer, but I think that it might be the best XTC drum performance. And he's in good company. I mean, the album before that, Oranges and Lemons had Pat Mastelato. 
uh, from uh, King Crimson and Mr. Mister, or the album before that. Skylarking had Curry Prince from the Tubes and Todd Rundgren. So they've had a lot of good drummers on their albums, but uh, I think that the drum performance on None Such is probably the best. Um, there are there are brass and strings on almost every track on on None Such. It might be every track. And um, the interesting thing about that is that the drum, the, the brass arrangements are not from an R&B or jazz uh, kind of uh, perspective. They're definitely like pastoral chamber music, very English sounding, um, which I think lends itself to the songs uh, really well. Um, the first song, Ballad of Peter Pumpkinhead, um, it's interesting because it's got a really big drum sound and it's a very live sound for a band that doesn't play live. Um, <laughs> you would, you could almost listen to that song and think, man, I wish they'd play live because it sounds really good. Um, there's been a lot of talk about the, the, uh, uh, the lyrics of, uh, Ballad of Peter Pumpkinhead, that there's been, uh, JFK analogies and Jesus Christ analogies, uh, the line, he's, he was too good. He, they nailed him to a block of wood, that kind of stuff. Um, very interesting. I think in interviews, uh, 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 Andy Partridge basically says that, Sure, it's about those things if you want it to be. Um, the second song, My Bird Performs, is, is one of only, let me see how many there are, one, two, three, four songs that are written by Colin Moulding. Um, they're all, all the rest written by Andy Partridge. And uh, that's kind of typical for an XTC album, and it starts with an Andy song, and a Colin song follows in either the number two or the number three position. Um, very English sounding brass arrangement on that song. Dear Madam Barnum after that, very elaborate backing vocal arrangement. I imagine it took them a very long time to record this record. Um, Humble Daisy again, really elaborate backing vocal arrangement, very atmospheric, kind of a spooky outro. Um, the, uh, the Smartest Monkeys is probably my, I have about two or three songs tied for number one as my favorite. And, uh, I really like that song. Very clever, uh, very clever lyrics, really great uh, stereo imaging things happening. Great drum performance, great bass performance. There's synths. I think there's Mellotron in there. Um, there's a keyboard solo, which uh, everybody probably has figured out by now that I like keyboards and keyboard solos. And uh, so that's a really strong track for me. The Disappointed is uh, was the first single, and it's probably the most straightforward pop song. Um, not one of my favorites on there, but... Uh, but it's the one that sounds the most like Orange and Lemons, the previous album, I think, in, in my opinion. Um, Holly Up on Poppy is a little, I like it a little bit better than The Disappointed. Um, it sounded like it was really hard to sing. Um, it sounds like it's a really challenging vocal part. Um, Crocodile is really rhythmic. It's got a rock, kind of a rockability style guitar that's really up front in the mix. Um, I think that's the first song on the album that's got, besides Peter Pumpkinhead, that's got really loud guitars. Um, Rook, it, I think, is another one of my favorite songs. And I think Rook is where the album really starts getting good. Um, the, there's a beautiful piano part and a beautiful string arrangement. And it's played in a round, like the string arrangement starts. And a couple of measures later, it starts again. And they lay over, over top of each other. And do it, or that I listen to, and I think Andy Partridge might really be a genius because the way he can make these songs so elaborate and and uh, and and without them, in my opinion, without them sounding too complicated, I, I think is a is is a, a really uh, smart thing. Um, Omnibus has like kind of a really insane brass arrangement again and around. It starts and then it starts again. Um, key changes. Um, in that song, uh, that wave is probably the heaviest song. It's weird. It starts really atmospheric and it's slow, but it's it's kind of a heavy song for XTC anyway. And it's got a rock guitar solo in it. There's not many of those on this album. Um, then she appears another pop song. I like it a little bit better than the disappointed. I think the melody is a little better. Um, War dance. I really like a lot. I think one, in one of those uh, in one of those uh, reviews that uh, Marco read off, somebody said something about that being one of the worst songs. Um, I think it's really good. It's got clarinets in it. I'm a I'm a woodwind player, so it's got clarinet and saxophone. Um, it's about British politics. Uh, um, the, there's a really great line. Everybody wants a slice of the jingoistic cake, which sounds like something that you would hear Andy Partridge say in an interview or something. <laughs> um, Wrapped in gray is. Um, a really gorgeous piano ballad. It's probably the prettiest song on the album. Um, the Ugly Underneath has a really noisy start, but it's got a gorgeous uh, chorus and 
the outro is really beautiful and that's probably the the high uh, to me is the highlight of the album is the outro of the ugly underneath i think it's really beautiful um, bungalow is a song that i have a uh troubled past with for most of my life since 1992 i've considered that to be the worst song and the worst xtc song i but i've warmed up to it but it, it it starts in a really dissident way that just really rubs me the wrong way and i've never enjoyed it and it gets a little better as it goes along but i think it's kind of interesting that they put it between two pretty rocking songs and so i think in that way it's kind of uh effective that way um books are burning is is great uh straightforward rock song guitar bass organ drums um more stripped down the rent than the rest of the album great lyrics about uh censorship and uh it's the only the only lyric in the album that i am not crazy about is in books are burning is where uh where andy said the smell of burnt book is not unlike human hair and I, I've always thought that's gross. Um, it's not one of my favorite lyrics. That might be what that guy was talking about when he said that there were some bad lyrics on the album. I think that's the only bad lyric on the album. But uh, there's a big guitar solo. And at the end of it, it has Dave and Andy, Dave Gregory and Andy Parker trading leads. In the booklet of the CD, it actually tells you who plays which one. And I just thought that was phenomenal because you know what Dave Gregory sounds like. You don't know how many of their solos were actually played by uh by andy and to have it laid out like and, and to hear them you know trade off leads and to, to know which one's which i think is another one of the highlights of the album um like i said before my favorite is skylarking uh but i think none such quality wise might be better i like oranges and lemons the album that comes between those two very very much but i think the mix on oranges and lemons is a little busy and it makes me uh it's a little hard to take because it's so long and I kind of feel like uh, it's, a, it's a little fatiguing after a while, but that's not a very popular opinion. I've never heard anybody else say that. <laughs> so, uh, but I would say that Skylarking is number one and None Such is number two. And I would give None Such a 9.5. Okay. Wow. High rating. Um, wow. 9.5. Okay. By the way, just for folks at home, I'm having technical difficulties, so I'm keeping my camera off, but I'm here. Okay. Um, I'm going to throw it over to Bicycle Legs. Um, this was, yep. uh, I, I think this was your idea, Bicycle Legs. So yeah. tell us if you like the album. I have a feeling yeah. you do. <laughs> you well, yeah, answer? I do. Here's my, this is my uh, vinyl copy. It's a repress. I would love to have an original pressing of this on vinyl, but I haven't managed to score one of those yet. Um, I recently on my channel, um, please come and have a look if you want to. Uh, it's just called Bicycle Legs. Uh, I recently did a studio albums ranked on XTC and none such was my contrarian number one pick. It was my number. It was top of my list. Skylarking was second. Black Sea was third. Um, but yeah, um, I think this is the best XTC album. And uh, I know that Andy thinks that Apple Venus is the best. I love Apple Venus, but I think the big difference between those two for me is that Apple Venus has a very sort of consistent feel throughout the whole album, whereas um, there's a lot more variety on None Such, and that's why I love it so much is because of all the variety that there is on the album. I think Gus Dudgeon's uh, production and Nick Davis's mixing is wonderful. It was another troubled production like Skylarking was, you know, with Skylarking, they had uh, Andy butted heads a lot with Todd Rundgren. Uh, on None Such, he butted heads a lot with Gus Dudgeon too. Um, I don't know why troubled productions seem to bring out the best in XTC, but they do. Um, but yeah, um, I mean, starts off with Ballad of Peter Pumpkinhead, great hard rocking uh, song made a good single um the crash test dummies did a, a cover of it for the dumb and dumber film um yeah it's a good song my bird performs i've always loved i uh, i think colin only has four songs on this album but i think all four of his songs are wonderful um dear madam barnum has a wonderful sort of circusy feel to it as you would probably guess from the title 
um, and the lyric is a quite whimsical one about a quite uh, dark topic about a, a sort of relationship falling apart. Um, Humble Daisy is a really lovely ballad. Um, Smartest Monkeys, the second of Colin's songs, it was the B-side of the Disappointed single because I remember buying that single when it came out. Um, and it's a great song. It has uh, apparently the keyboard solo on it, um, Colin asked for something kind of Genesis sounding and that horrified Andy, absolutely horrified Andy that, that Colin would want that. But um, yeah. It's a really good song. The Disappointed, I think, was a really good lead single. Um, yeah, it's a more straightforward pop song, but I think that's a good sort of intro um, to the album. Um, Holly Up on Poppy, I, I like songs like that where it's about someone's child and that sort of thing. I think they're lovely. And I, I think Andy manages to get the lyric to be lovely without being cloying. Um, he he, balance, he he walks that tightrope, and I think he walks it well. Crocodile's a great rocking song with uh, some lovely sort of percussion sounds in it. Um, another song about sort of relationships falling apart. It was quite a, a theme for Andy on this album because his marriage was in the process of falling apart as this album was being made. Rook. What a beautiful song. What a gorgeous string arrangement. Very much a harbinger, I think, of what Andy in particular wanted to do going forward with um, Apple Venus Volume 1. Um, very much a template for that album. Um, and and uh, Todd mentioned sort of the, the cyclical um, arrangement on that song and on Omnibus. I think that sort of reached a zenith with the opening track on Apple Venus, um, River of Orchids. That's sort of like the most cyclical uh, song arrangement you could possibly have. But yeah, Omnibus, I, I love that. Sort of, the, it really gives you the motion, the feeling, the arrangement gives you the feeling of motion of a bus, sort of chugging along the road sort of thing. Um, that wave, really good sort of crunchy mid-paced rock song with a fabulous guitar solo. Absolutely scorching guitar solo on that. Um, then she appeared as a beautiful uh, uh, pop song, really lovely. The, the name Apple Venus comes from the lyric of that song. Um, they did that a bit, like Oranges and Lemons, the title from that came from a, a lyric in... Um, uh, in the Skylarking, and then none such came from a lyric in Oranges and Lemons, and then Apple Venus came from a lyric in on this album. So, yeah, and apparently that was unintentional, but there you go. Um, War Dance, great Colin song. It's actually a Colin lyric, that jingoistic cake one, Todd. Oh, yeah, that's Andy right. Lyric. I guess I get, yeah, I, I don't know why I made that mistake. You're right. Yeah, but... Um, yeah, it's a really good song, but the um, the clarinet on that is actually a um, a keyboard clarinet. It's not a real clarinet, and Andy always hated that. I've got a book that's um, where they talk about all the songs, and um, Andy actually says about the clarinet on that. He says, "I wish we'd used a real clarinet. Um, the one on the record sounds like a singing penis." <laughs> it fooled me, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Anyway. Uh, Wrapped in Grey is the song that completely broke uh, XTC's relationship with Virgin when they pulled the single at the last minute. It's a song that uh, Andy was inordinately proud of, um, and for good reason, because it is an absolutely gorgeous song. Um, the Ugly Underneath, great sort of rockin' song, and I agree with Todd that the, the sort of more calm outro on that song really sort of it sort of contrasts with the first half of the song, which is really sort of jarring and clashy. Um, and then Bungalow. I love Bungalow. I think it's a gorgeous song. Andy thinks it's the best song Colin ever wrote. I, I remember reading that. He said yeah. that in a couple interviews, I think. And, and it's one of the few Colin songs that he says he wish he'd written. So um, I think it's a gorgeous song, and I really love that sort of, 
the organ at the beginning of that that that's dissonant and that I think it it lends it in then goes into a more sort of majestic uh arrangement after that sort of uh dissonant intro I think it's really good and then books are burning yeah great uh last song I think for an album um and the the twin guitars really really good um Andy very rarely played lead guitar on his own songs. If he was going to play lead guitar, it was usually on one of Colin's songs. So um, just because he, he found it easier to, you know, do it on when he wasn't having to sing as well. But um, there's a, a wonderful live version of that song that they did for the BBC, like a, a BBC television program. Uh, where they played it live and Andy did all the lead solos because uh, Dave Gregory was playing the keyboards. And um, it's a really, really good version. I think they're on the um, Stephen Wilson deluxe version. There's a, a, that version of the song is included as an extra. Um, well worth checking out. But yeah, it is, I think, top to bottom, my favourite XTC album because I love the variety on it. You get a little bit of everything that XTC has ever done on this album, I think. And that's why I put it on the top of my, my list. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's, that's my feelings about none such. And grade it out of 10. Oh, it's a 10. Absolutely. Okay. A 10. All right. Nice. Down for Good 10. Job, high scores. <laughs> wow. Pontus, take it away. Yeah. Um, I'm not an XTC expert. I'm very much a casual listener to the, that band, um, but I do like what I hear. And I must say that XTC is a, one of those groups that actually gets better the older they get. The latter, the album, the later albums are much better than the first albums. And that's a very few groups I find that, that can sustain that growth musically usually you have a a sort of a momentum and then it fizzles out and then it comes a lot of uh, bad albums after that but this band and th these composers grow all the time you know it's the the next album is better than the other one you know my introduction was hearing on the ra on Swedish radio they had uh, this folk program and they played one of the million uh, from uh, Orange is Lemons. And I love that track. I love that song. So I bought uh, uh, the single, which is with the B-side, um, Major Assembleton. And so that was my introduction. And um, non such, I picked up in a bin somewhere on CD. And it was such a surprise because it was so... You know, it wasn't a big album. It wasn't a big seller in Europe. Uh, it just hanged around. You just saw it and you just picked it up and it was a masterpiece. It's one of those, what? Albums, you know? Uh, and I must say, I mean, here is an album, which for me is a project that would never happen, but as a fantasy, you know, it would be interesting. I think we hear an album that equals as if Paul McCartney had made an album with Brian Wilson. That would be interesting. It will never happen. If that had happened, um, you know, it, it would be impossible for many, many reasons. But I think it's a solid, very beautiful pop album and it's just classic pop throughout. And it's just wonderful in that case. You know, it's so, you know, from start to finish. And uh, Bicycle Leg show the uh, vinyl. And uh, when I listened to it uh, this week, I looked at the vinyl uh, listing and listened to it that way. Because it, 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 it is a bit too long. That's my only criticism of it. It is a bit too long if you listen on the one listen straight so i divided into the four sides and it was yeah i loved it you know i love the fact that we have uh from the ballad of peter pumpkinhead to 
books are burning is these enormously crafted pop songs with a lot of hooks that just is this fantastic um, melodies that doesn't feel like um, they're contrived or anything. They just flow. They just flow. And they, they, these two guys write off each other. You know, like, um, you know, Peter Pumpkinhead and uh, um, My Bird perform. You know, it's, they just click into each other. They just fit. And I think the production is great. I think Gastonian made it just um, a great 90s pop album. Nick Davies gets a lot of sh- uh, get a lot of slack for the Genesis remasters and all that, but this time he really nailed it with this mix. And I think it is absolutely astonishing. My favorite album by XTC is um, Apple Venus Volume One. I think that is a wonderful. But it, that's the album after that. So mm. after they went on strike. But the more you listen to this group, you find you, you're in a pop heaven. You enter this magical, magical, magical um, room and you're just surrounded with all these fantastic pop songs, um, as well as Dukes of Stratosphere albums. You know, you, you've got this psychedelia thing, you've got this. Um, nice pop songs like um, um, The Wave and you've got The Disappointed which is just a a great radio song with a lot of integrity you know it's not schmaltzy it's just this integrity that is just there and I so wish that there were more albums you know coming from these guys but um, Andy does what he does and uh, Dave Gregor Dave Gregory has a, a very nice group uh, which calls called Toy Spirit or Teen Spirit, sorry, uh, which made two great albums, which I think is just fantastic. I haven't heard the um, Andy Partridge, um, that series, what it's called, I don't remember. Fuzzy Warbles? Yeah. Fuzzy Warbles, yeah. Um, oh, those are a must. Those are a must. All right, all right. I'll, well, lots of new stuff to get, right? But um, yeah, I just, I, this is a 10 record for me. This is a number 10, definitely, because it's so, it's just this magical pop feeling throughout. And I just immerse in it. I just feel so happy when I'm coming out of it. Wow, 10 out of 10? Is that what you're Yeah, absolutely. Wow. All, right. <laughs> All right, we're on a roll here. Yeah. Grant, are you going to go up or down on the album? I'm going to go down unfortunately but let me say this i can't elaborate any more than what todd or what bicycle legs have said they have summed everything up perfectly what i want to say about xtc is that they are a band that has never put out a bad record they've constantly improved over time now that being said i consider not such a 10 out of 10 i can see where everyone likes it But for me, that's not one of the ones I usually pull out and play. I think the best XTC album is Apple Venus. I think that is a work of art. I think it's wonderfully recorded. I mean, they recorded it at Abbey Road. I mean, it doesn't have Dave Gregory on it. I think he's on some of it maybe, but I think it's what you have. It's just a, they're just magnum opus. I think it's just a perfect record. But non such, I mean, it's a great record, but the thing that drives me crazy about it, I mean, this is like nitpicking, but it's very slick. The drums are really hot in the mix, and I'm not that crazy about the snare sound. It's, but the songs are top notch, but it's not something that I would pull out and listen to. I mean, I like all the Beach Boys, like, uh, what's the one song? Um, Oh, crap. Uh, oh, my brain. Humble Daisy is very Beach Boys-esque. Mm. If you've listened ever listened like the Beach Boys, Beach Boys Smile Sessions, you'll understand what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, great track. 
Um, then she appeared again, a, a McCartney kind of song. But, you know, the, it's very jazzy. The Baroque arrangements are great. Um, I mean, it's a slick record. I mean, it's it's kind of like one of those albums you put out late in your career when you're trying to your last hurrah. I don't know. I don't want to be too hard on it. It's a great record. It's no Skylarking. It's no Black Sea. It's no Drums and Wires. See, I, it's just, it's really too clean for me. I don't, I don't know how to, else to explain it. I mean, I like Skylarking as much as, you know, Todd Rundgren's productions usually sound horrible. There's a certain charm about Skylarking and the way it flows and all the instrumentation. It's brilliant. I'd probably say, I'm going to rank Apple Venus my number one, Skylarking number two, Black C3, Drums and Wires 4. A lot of people like English Settlement. I, in fact, I love all these records. If I was on a desert island and all I had to do was pick one, I still would be happy with Nonsuch. It's not like I hate it or anything. Um, but there's just other ones I like better, you know. Yeah. I don't know. No, it's funny, you know, the way you're talking about how you feel like it sounds like a very slick album. It's very slick. I, that's that's how I feel about Oranges and Lemons. Well, Oranges and Lemons is slick too. It's like everything after Skylarking, they just I don't I don't know how to put my finger on it, but it's just very slick. But I love that Oranges and Lemons too, but I never pick oranges and lemons out if i just want to listen to one yeah no i'm the same but it's a fabulous record don't get me wrong but there are ones i have my you know i would probably even pick wasp wasp star over oranges and lemons that's good too but but i think that's just me and i don't want i'm not trying to dog the any of them you know i'm just saying no i agree they're all brilliant every every, there, there is as you said, no such thing as a bad XTC album. There really isn't. No. What's your ranking out of 10, Grant? You said 10 out of 10 earlier. Well, well if Apple Venus is a 10, I'll give... But the problem is they keep improving. And I guess. It's no Apple Venus. Jesus, you started off saying you were going to go down on it, and then you. <laughs> well, it, you continued it's the there. trend. <laughs> well, to be fair, Mark, that is the it's lowest the score we've record. had so far. <laughs> Sorry, what did you say, Grant? What was the score? It's a great record, but mm. it's not my go-to. Huh? That's funny. Yeah. I think he said nine out of which ten. Which I don't listen though. to go-to ever, but you know, <laughs> it's a great record, just not my favorite. All right, 9 out of 10. Cool. All right, last but not least, Martin, take it away. Oh, boy. Uh, I hope nobody has a thin skin, um, and I uh, <laughs> hope nobody gets mad at this, but I'm definitely going to go down on this one. Um, I have a funny relationship with with um, not so much the last two, which are separate from the whole run, but Oranges and Lemons and Nonsuch. It's almost like I love XTC so much, and I played them so much, and now... XTC and the Damned, probably over the last 20 years. I hope I haven't said this about other bands. I don't think I include too many other bands. Maybe the Jam, maybe even ZZ Top. XTC and the Damned, I've probably played more than any bands in the last 20 years. Okay. So love XTC to death. But it's almost like I remember getting, I got all these as new releases. And I remember getting Oranges and Lemons as a new release. And it was like, I've heard all the tricks. You've done all this before. Now it's just more commercial. Now it's got kind of a, a we're crossing the Atlantic vibe and we're trying to please everybody and, uh, oh, everybody likes them and all that kind of thing. I remember getting oranges and lemons and saying, I don't need XDC in my life right now in whatever year that was. It, 90, 87 89, or something? 89. 89. So this is 92 and it got even worse. I mean, this album to me just... I barely even noticed it coming out at the time, but I love to death and they're, they're a huge part of my fiber, like definitely black sea English settlement skylarking would be my top three. Love the big express love mummer. Love the first, first three, all of them go to, Mm. it doesn't matter. Drums and wires. I love as well, but, but it's almost like you get to this point and a grant. I totally agree with you. My big problem with it is the slickness 
the snare sound, the drum sound period, the Dave Maddox performance. Um, the the entire record to me just feels like I've heard all these I've heard all these tricks before, and I've heard them a little more creatively fearless and urgent. Um, by this point, I'm realizing these guys fight with each other all the time. They're fighting with their label. They're they're like six figures in debt apparently. Um, they're fighting with the producer, and they've already had fights with before. Or, so there's just bad vibes around the whole band at this point. I, I just wanted to point out kind of a neat thing about it we haven't we haven't mentioned yet. Um, the CD came with this. It's not even a sticker. It's like literally painted print right on the CD cover. So when you put when you put the uh, the cover in, you get you get that. So it had the kind of cool little trick of oh. that. But you know, and also this is the first one I got on CD. I never owned it on vinyl, and every other one was on vinyl. I don't know if that makes a difference. I'm a sucker for a double album as well. So I really wanted to like oranges and lemons, but didn't. Um, and I love, I love English settlement because it's a double album as well. And the, and the, you know, the, um, the textured cover and all that stuff, it was amazing. Right. Um, but I'm just feeling at this point, I I'm almost, I'm almost even, um, annoyed at, you, you know how like an outsider to, to XTC might listen to Andy Partridge's vocals and say, I'm not having any of that. I don't, I don't mm. like that kind of vocal. I don't like this kind of twee professorial band. You know, you would, you would see outsiders say, right. But at this point I'm agreeing with them all. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm like uh, fatigued at his voice. I'm fatigued at the sing songy melodies and the tweeness of it and the Englishness of it. Um, when I loved the Englishness before, because I loved when they when they had a real sort of anti-commercial um, post-punk ethic to them, the tribal drums, the noise, the uh, you know, the, the gang of foreigners to them even uh, mm -hmm. in, in the beginning. Right. For, say, the first three records. Right. Um, Terry but, but, Chambers. <laughs> yeah. And, and just the, yeah. just the complicated, almost like, you know, uh, you know, you could almost have that debate. Is, are these guys a prog band? Right. Um, so there was a creative fearlessness and also an urgency and a noisiness and just a cantankerousness to the music. And here it's all sort of smoothed over. I don't, I don't want, I don't want the Beatles out of them anymore. I've heard enough of the Beatles in them in, in measured doses that I've already got that. I don't want to hear the beach boys in them anymore. I'd, and I don't want to hear any Americanness, and I don't want to think about them on MTV and any of that sort of stuff. I, I don't like the tweeness of the ballad of Peter Punk, Pumpkinhead after we already got mayor of Simpleton and all this kind of stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm literally at this point. Um, it was just weird. It, it, it started with oranges and lemons and I put these two records together all the time. Like to me, they're just the same record. Um, and, and just everything about the band at this point is it's almost like, it's almost like weirdly I've moved on, but they were always in my life all along. And like I say, for the last 20 years, they've been more in my life than ever. Like a lots and lots of black sea and lots of English settlement, English settlement just over and over again. Unfortunately, it's not a very long double album, but it's a double album. Right. Which is kind of cool. And same with oranges and lemons. I don't think it's a very long double album. Is it? Um, and, and are you guys saying that when this came out on vinyl, it was a double album? Yes. Like you, you, yeah, you have, a, you have, have vinyl in this, right? But, yeah, but unfortunately, at, at 17 tracks, it's going to be a short double album as well, right? Um, yeah, but as a CD, I, can, I, can, I see all those complaints about, you know, you think the album's going to end soon at 10 and 11 tracks and just keeps going on and on and on. And they, and they keep pulling the stuff out of their bags of tricks and doing, doing all those tricks you know and you liked better when they were massaged in against more thornier songs all the time. But there's nothing really thorny on here. It's just all that smooth Gus Dudgeon, pr you know, production and, um, and those big drums, which, again, make me think Americanized for some reason. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just, I was just never on board with this as much as I try over and over. And I think, you know, across these two long double albums, there's always, you know, stuff that you can get interested in. And, and, and to me, to me, Oranges and Lemons is a little more of a headphone album, but to me, it's like, it's like that whole run from really drums and wires all the way up to your, your Skylarkings and big expresses and, and mummer and all that stuff. There's, there's so many great, really novel strange songs on there last comment i guess i'll make is the other thing this reminds me of at this point like me being fed up with xdc at this point is where 
Elvis Costello over and over and over again, genius song after genius song after genius song. And all of a sudden it's like, I don't, I, I, I can't, I can't even fathom 90 genius songs from Elvis Costello anymore. And yet they keep coming over and over and over again. And I'm like, right. I've had it. I've had it. I can't, I can't absorb any more Elvis Costello. And that's what I felt like starting right day one with oranges and lemons. So I'm going to give this a, um, I'm going to give this a six out of 10 because it is very long and it's still XTC and it's still very creative. I just don't think it's very creative for XTC. I think they're coasting on here. So I'm, I'm going to go six out of 10. Nice. So our average score, if you include my one out of 10, no, I'm just kidding. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't rank the, uh, I didn't rank the album. If you, um, you add up all the scores, we got an 8.9. So that's still pretty high. That's almost a nine out of 10, which is like 10 out of 10 is perfect. This is what we're saying as us group of fellows is saying that this is almost a perfect album. We got three 10 out of 10s here. So um, that's really good. That's a really high ranking album. I know I'm a definite outlier and I, I literally at my six out of 10 would probably put this down with uh, go to an oranges and lemons. And that's really it. Maybe the debut. I mean, well, it, it would definitely be one of the last four for me. Well, it's interesting how when I'm looking at rankings list, this is coming in like second last, third last. Yeah. Like quite a few of the rankings lists I've looked at, but yet on this, just in this panel, it's pretty high. Yeah. You guys are star contrarians then for that reason, right? (laughs) Other than the ranker list, the ranker list, which had fans voting, had this at number three. So, Mm -hmm. and the critics all gave this like five out of five, 4.5 out of five. Like this got really high review. It's just, it's a weird polarizing album in the sense that like some people just love it and critics love it and fans love it but then all these ranking lists put it so it's just odd it's an odd and it didn't sell anything like it didn't certify to to me it's to me it's a precious album you know it's Mm. precious Uh, precious. they've already been so precious for so long right and and just so annoying to so many people it's like darn those xdc they just wrote the best album again and and we can't do it you know and it's like that thing over and over and over again it's it's and and then but but at some point it's like you you go i've had enough i don't know it's a it's a weird way looking at it i'm sure but i get it but i do have a question for you Mm -hmm. i do have a question for you martin does it do you think that is the fact where you come into this band? If you come into the later albums, you you sort of uh, enjoy this better. Yeah, you could I yeah. suppose you because there's so the many punk- they've been through, right? That, that's it. That's it. That, that, that's what I was going to say, Martin. Is that mm-hmm. XTC have gone through you know half a dozen different styles of music. And so I think where you rank certain albums often has to do with which one of those styles sort of grabs you the most, whether Mm -hmm. it's the punkiness of those really early albums or it's the more sort of edgy new wave of sort of, you know, Black Sea and English Settlement, that sort of thing, or the pastoralness of Mama and um, Skylarking, or then you get into these more sort of albums like, I think for me, you know, the thing I love about this album is that it takes a bit of all of those and puts it on there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you get, you know, the the absolute sort of uh, orchestralness of Venus. So yeah. I think it does depend very much on which one of those pushes your buttons the most as to yeah. where you'll rank this album. Yeah. Well, well, I came, I came on board with uh, with uh, drums and wires, and when I was in the tenth grade, I saw the video yeah. for Life Begins at the Hop, and I remember. I remember the video and, and I hope I'm not remembering it wrong, but I think Andy's playing a styrofoam guitar and as he play every lick that he plays, he knocks yeah. a piece of it off until it's yeah, that's until a... he has no neck. Yeah. We just thought they were weird. And uh and, and that was a good thing because we liked everything that was weird. And but yeah. I feel like I grew up with them. And so as they got more sophisticated, I my tastes also kind of went that way. But I, I will say about uh uh oranges and lemons and none such in that like like probably like in the in the early 2000s i took like a almost decade long break from xtc because i felt like it was just there's so much going on in those albums and i felt like i just needed to kind of step away from them so even in prepping for this episode it, it had been a long time since i listened to this so, <laughs> but I was pleasantly surprised at how, how much 
I, I remembered and how much of it I thought was really great, but, yeah. but I do understand the whole, oh my gosh, I just need a break. There's so yeah. much going I on. Think, I think for people who didn't grow up with XTC, they're very much what Martin would describe as a retirement band. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you, you really need a yeah. long time to, to um, process their catalog, even though it's only 12 albums, if you don't include the Dukes. Mm. Um, there's so much going on in those 12 albums that it takes a lot of time to process it all. Yeah. They're sure. very dense. All right, cool. Yep. That was a, that was a really fun discussion. It was fun. Interesting listening to you folks. I'm myself. I'm not a huge XTC expert, so that's why I didn't participate in this discussion, but I'm going to go back and, and try to listen to some of these albums because it sounds like everybody here loves XTC so much. I don't know what I'm missing yet. So I'm going to go back and check it out. I hope all of you at home go back and check it out. If you want to join our panel discussions, join us over at patreon.com. We have some merch. The link is in the description. Um, and other than that, I guess we'll agree to disagree and we'll see you next time. Okay. Thanks all right. again, guys. All right. Good night. Yeah, that was fun. Good night, Dave. See ya.